Mr. Porter presents a brief history of the tracksuit. Cast your mind back to a distant place known as the 1960s, when the term tracksuit meant a zipper jacket and a matching pair of trousers, usually fashioned of a lightweight synthetic material, perhaps with some sort of decorative piping. In its initial incarnation, it was the sole province of athletes, such as the sprinters Mr. John Carlos and Mr. Tommy Smith, and long-distance runners such as Mr. Frank Shorter and Mr. Steve Prefontaine. You see, hence, tracksuit. But come the 1970s, the tracksuit very quickly vaulted into popular culture. Bruce Lee wore a tight little red number in the cult TV drama Longstreet. And shortly thereafter, the tracksuit achieved global bionic liftoff via Lee Majors as Steve Austin, the six million dollar man. No longer was the tracksuit something to be casually sloughed off by a lean professional runner seconds before the big race. Now it was me generation fitness gear, the uniform of that small handful of neighborhood eccentrics known as <coughs> joggers. Still, by the 1980s, there remained vis-a-vis -vis the tracksuit, a pretense of athleticism. That concept, however, was forever upended by the advent of 80s hip-hop. The fashion stylings of Daryl McDaniels, Joseph Simmons, and Jam Master J, that's Run DMC to you, began a reinterpretation of tracksuits as prestige streetwear. And in fairness, breakdancing was not a world away from sporting competition, as every aficionado of the 1984 film Beat Street knows all too well. Variations of the Adidas B-Boy Ensemble have since been donned by everyone, from the Beastie Boys, to Snoop Dogg, to Oasis in their laddish, lagerish heyday, to Chaz, Ari and Uzi Tenenbaum from the Royal Tenenbaums. In the 80s, a more nefarious faction appeared on the scene, organized crime. Paradoxically, the comfort afforded by loose-fitting, elastic-waisted sporting gear has proved irresistible to such soft-bellied, reputed mobsters as Nicholas Little Nick Corozzo and John Jr. Gotti, as well as to their fictitious TV counterparts such as The Sopranos' estimable Paulie Walnuts. To say nothing of the fading Caribbean Basin strongmen Castro and Chavez, who when off duty traded in their military fatigues for outfits that even Paulie would have dismissed as de trop. What an ignominious endpoint for a once noble garment. Or so we might have concluded until fashion designers, in their curiosity to incorporate performance fabrics and athletic cuts into everyday wear, decided to give the tracksuit a modern day sprucing up. Designers such as Christopher Kane and Gucci's Alessandro Michele have reimagined the tracksuit to impressive effect, whilst Adidas is also in on the new era action. The point being, Gentlemen, we can rebuild the tracksuit. We have the technology. We can make it better than it was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. <laughs>